Continuing our discussion of chapter one, the authors also cover some general information about what counts as a legal framework in international law about the subject of human rights. And again, international law is more difficult to adjudicate and enforce at the domestic level, and this leads to criticisms of international law being ineffective and basically not existing at all. Incidentally, human rights is only one area of international law. International law also applies to trade, finance, maritime activities, war, and other types of relations between states. Um, anytime you have a treaty, it has the force of law in the international realm. So we started with a discussion of the Declaration of Human Rights as a declaration that does not really count as law, but there are more stringent legal mechanisms in place. There are 16 treaties, covenants, and conventions signed related to various specifics in human rights, and they do, in effect, have the force of law. One of the misconceptions about international law as it pertains to human rights is that absent the enforcement mechanisms we are familiar with in domestic law, the international law is somehow not real. But there are two important points to remember. Enforcement or compulsion to follow treaties takes different forms at the international level. This might include more carrot than stick, as they say. Things like dipl diplomatic pressure, trade embargoes, um, and then at the extreme, military intervention are all possible ways that states could compel each other to honor their commitments. The next point is that the divide between international and domestic law is not as absolute as it seems, because once an international law has been established through the signing of a treaty, states pass laws to bring their legal code into agreement with international law. This makes international law effectively the same as domestic law. Another misconception about international human rights law is that states are only obligated to respect human rights in their own territory. In other words, they operate under the presumption that they can violate human rights outside of their borders. For example, one of the reasons the United States uh, created offshore prisons for enemy combatants, even if they were arrested in the United States, was to avoid the human rights obligations it had to its own population under our Constitution. Now, while this sounds very critical of the United States, and it is, um, all states have operated under, under this assumption. The authors in this book, as well as many activists, scholars, and diplomats, argue that there should be one standard at home and abroad. There are a multitude of institutions and actors that are involved in crafting, monitoring, and prescribing solutions for violations of human rights. The first is the UN Human Rights System. It includes the Human Rights Commission, Traditionally, it did its work through investigation of alleged abuses, um, through creating political reputational consequences. We call it naming and shaming of countries who have poor human rights records. The commission was replaced by the Human Rights Council in 2006. This is made up of 47 member states elected annually by a majority vote. Each country is subject to universal periodic review based on fact-finding missions. The other work um, includes a host of working groups on specific issues, and they publish annual reports around their topic. We also have the High Commissioner for Human Rights. This was created in 1993 to establish a single office as a focal point for human rights activity in the United Nations. Currently, this post is occupied by the former Chilean President Michelle Bachelet. Various human rights treaty bodies exist to monitor and administer these major human rights treaties. The name of each body is the name of the treaty. So there's a Committee Against Torture, Committee uh, on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, etc. States that are party to these treaties submit reports to the appropriate bodies, and these bodies then offer commentary that they call concluding observations. The treaty bodies also deal with complaints of human rights abuses. The United Nations Security Council includes 15 members, 10 who are rotating between various member states in the United Nations, but there are five permanent members, the United States, China, Russia, France, and the UK, and these have power, veto power over any resolution or call to action. This is the only body of the United Nations that can authorize use of force in another country. 
The next important position related to human rights is the Secretary General. Um, the Secretary General is the head of the Secretariat of the United Nations. This is one of the major bodies of the UN. Essentially, he occupies or she occupies the position of chief executive officer um, of the United Nations. So they're the chief officer in charge of operations. So at times, um, this position has existed to really uh, and focused the United Nations on human rights abuses. The former Secretary General Wan Ki Moon, for example, um, made human rights the absolute priority of the UN. Um, the current photo shown here is Antonio Guterres, who is the current Secretary General. The General Assembly is another human rights body that um, has really unlimited competence. This is, as far as the UN is concerned, the major parliamentary or legislative arm of the UN, of the government of the UN. Um, so they recognize human rights as a big part of their purpose as well. Um, and they play a direct role by creating declarations related to human rights. And these sometimes have turned into actual human rights treaties. Um, the General Assembly is made up of every country in the United Nations, and they all have a vote. And so this body is in a position to take decisive action on the question of human rights abuses through passing resolutions or even at the extreme and under very specific circumstances allowed to authorize use of force in countries if the secretary, I'm sorry, if the Security Council has refrained from doing its job. Next, we have the International Court of Justice. This is the principal legal body for the United Nations. It exists to settle disputes submitted by UN member states. It also gives advisory opinions on legal questions that are submitted by other organizations um, and the General Assembly. So essentially, the rulings of the ICJ have the effect of a ruling of the court, any court of law. And this means that states are obligated to follow the decision of the ICJ. In addition, the International Criminal Court is a permanent tribunal that was established in 2002 by the Rome Statute. And this court prosecutes individuals accused of four types of crime, genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and crimes of aggression. While prosecution is difficult and contingent on a number of legal specificities, the ICC has the authority to prosecute and punish human rights abuses. So in this way, it works like many other criminal courts simply on the international scale. There are also existing tribunals that have been established to try um, perpetrators of crimes during specific conflicts like Rwanda and Yugoslavia. These actually formed the basis for the structure of the International Criminal Court. There are limitations to the jurisdiction of the ICC. For the ICC to have jurisdiction, certain conditions have to be met, like the alleged crimes have to be involving one or more signatories to the Rome Statute. This can be the offender or potential victims. Second, the crimes have to fit within the definitions of the specific crimes listed in the Rome Statute. And third, there must be proof that the suspected offender will not be appropriately tried under their own constitution and legal legal system. The United States has a conflicted relationship with the ICC. It is not a signatory of the treaty and it opposes the ICC as a threat to its sovereignty. Because the United States is accused of violating human rights to members who have signed the treaty, the Rome Statute gives the ICC authority to prosecute accused members of the United States military. Currently, the ICC has opened an investigation into the United States' behavior in Iraq and Afghanistan, accusing them of human rights abuses. And the United States has retaliated by diplomatic sanctions against um, the countries which have supported these measures and who are involved in this investigation and the attempt to prosecute. 
There are also other international legal organizations that operate more on a regional scale than a global scale that address the issue of human rights abuses. These organizations have a similar framework to the United Nations. They have their own treaties that are enforceable through their dispute resolution processes. So some of the most noteworthy um, treaties are the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, uh, the American Convention on Human Rights, and the European Convention on Human Rights. In addition to these regional level organizations, there are also non-governmental organizations that do operate at the global level, and these are dedicated to human rights abuses. These include groups like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Doctors Without Borders, and Oxfam. And these organizations play an important role in reporting um, on the ground conditions uh, when there are human rights abuses. So this chapter has reviewed the principles and ideas of human rights as they've occurred throughout human history and in different cultures and religions. Um, the entitlement to human rights was institutionalized on an international level with the UDHR. Um, since then, the framework has only expanded to include international, regional, and national structures and created more stringent forms of monitoring, reporting, and um, even resolving issues of human rights abuses. So acknowledging the existence of human rights um, as, as being universal is an important step, but it is the only, uh, only the first step. And so we have to really talk next about what types of responsibilities go along with this recognition and what states must do to keep themselves um, in line with the treaties that they have signed.